and I'm still in the lab. Ah, the loser life of a PhD student. Anyway, subject, falling from grace. Dear Terry, well, it's 1995 in your part of the continent. Happy New Year. I spent this last day of 1994 examining the fin limb structure of the Sarcatarian Usenopteron. This was the fish that we've just examined. Considering this anatomy in the light of the latest work on limb development, manifestation of sonic hedgehog in the ZPA, this is one of those developmental molecules we just talked about. And following Howard Van Til in debate with others on the reflector, he's so gracious, Howard Van Til was the leading Christian evolutionist at the time, and the reflector was an internet group that debated origins. I end the last moments of 1994 as an apostate. Well, we've seen this theme before of me being a little facetious by saying that I'm, quote, falling from grace. I said this when I left the literal reading of the book of Genesis and Young Earth Creation at the end of my time at Regent College, and now I was an evolutionist. I was fully aware that many Christians would believe that I had lost my Christian faith. But when I accepted evolution, my faith in the Lord Jesus did not change one little bit. In fact, the next day was January 1st, 1995, and it fell on a Sunday. I went to church, and I thanked the Lord for showing me the method he used to create life by a logical evolution. So let's go to the origins chart one last time. After three and a half years of studying biological evolution day in and day out, I came to realize why biologists say that the evidence for evolution is overwhelming. And indeed, the evidence is truly overwhelming. Every bit of scientific evidence that we have fits the theory of evolution. And every new discovery that we make continues to fit the theory. So in the final minutes of 1994, I became an evolutionary creationist. In other words, I came to the conclusion that God created living organisms through evolution. And that evolution is an ordained, sustained, and design reflecting process. I finished my PhD in evolutionary biology in 1997 and since that time I've been working out the details of how a committed Christian can also be an evolutionist and I'll confess it's been challenging. In 2008 I published a 500 page book entitled Evolutionary Creation A Christian Approach to Evolution the ninth chapter offers a more complete version of my personal story in coming to terms with evolution. In the conclusion of the book, I make what I believe is the most important statement of my voyage in attempting to understand origins in Christianity. And this is it. I must point out to my brothers and sisters in Christ that the Jesus I knew as a young earth creationist is the very same Jesus I know and love today as an evolutionary creationist. We serve the same Lord. So yes, a Christian who loves Jesus can accept evolution. In fact, this belief became the title of my 170-page summary of evolutionary creation entitled, I Love Jesus, and I accept evolution. In the light of my personal story, let me offer a few conclusions. And you'll find these on the second page of the handout in the lower left. First, there are two misconceptions that are deeply embedded in our culture. Number one is the origins dichotomy which assumes that the origins debate is limited to only two positions, either atheistic evolution or creation in six literal days. As a result, our minds are trapped in black and white thinking, and this stops us from seeing all the possibilities. 
and of making informed decisions. Misconception number two is scientific concordism, which assumes that the Bible reveals basic scientific facts on how the world was made. Regrettably, most people today think this is the case. And you saw both of these cultural misconceptions played out in my life. Once I saw some evolutionary evidence in my first year of college, I quickly rejected my boyhood Christian faith because it contradicted what the Bible said about the creation of the world. And once I returned to Christianity during my United Nations tour in Cyprus, I rejected evolution under the influence of young earth creationist Dwayne Gish. So there I was flip-flopping between two positions because the culture was telling me I only had two choices and that the Bible revealed scientific facts on how the world was created. My second conclusion is that there's a serious information problem in our churches. And you saw this played out in my life. When I returned to faith at age 25, all the churches I attended were promoting young earth creation. But my training in theology later proved to me that the Bible is not a book of science and that scientific concordism is not a feature of the inerrant word of God. As well, my churches were boldly claiming that there wasn't any evidence whatsoever for evolution and that transitory fossils did not exist. But my training in biology proved to me that these claims were false. There's overwhelming evidence for evolution and many transitory fossils. The church is the house of God and God is truth and Christian leaders need to deal immediately with the fact that God's Word does not reveal scientific facts about origins and that evolution is indeed a fact. Today, young people are losing their faith in record numbers and the evolution issue is a major reason for this. Christian leaders need to deal with this problem immediately. Now an interesting question can be raised. What about my belief that God had called me to become a creation scientist back in 1984? Of course, I reject young earth creation today. So did God really call me back then? Well, I certainly believe that he did. And by grace, God called me by coming down to my level. I was trapped in the origins dichotomy and convinced that scientific concordism was a feature of the Bible. As every Christian has experienced, God meets us wherever we happen to be. But notice what God did. He called me first to theology school in order to straighten out my reading of the early chapters of the Bible and then he led me to training in evolutionary biology. So, I believe that God did indeed call me to do this, but he also knew that I was going to be a work in progress, and by grace, he was going to educate me along the way. My job was to follow him and to listen to what he was teaching me. And despite the fact that I do have a definitive view of origins called evolutionary creation. My personal voyage in struggling to understand how the universe and life came about has led me to what I believe is the deepest conclusion of all, which is it's not about how God created the world, but that God created the world. Thank you for listening, and a special thank you to Andrea Dimitrish for all her wonderful artwork on the fossils in the handout.